Okay, I installed OBS 27.1.3, whatever the latest, you know, app get uh, updated through Snap. Um, uh, you know, it's a terminal installed. And I uh, wanted to see if this would improve trying to record YouTube video sections. Or even just uh, GNOME uh, video player sections to make like a faster edit when I'm in open shot. Because I've been using open shot when I do edit videos. I haven't edited videos much. But um, when I do. So I found that um, with the settings, there's just, it's just not, there's too many frames that are dropped. But it looks like with 10, uh, 24 inch by 576, a 169 ratio, um, that um, doesn't seem to drop with GNOME so bad, um, but still not that great. YouTube's still pretty bad, um, even with the lowest uh, video output. Um, but I figured I'd just make a quick video and upload to uh, YouTube and just go through on my Facebook. Um, photos. They didn't make a video of the 6690 machine. And this is a machine I picked up for $25. Sound like it was working. Um, kind of part of this Viking type of line where this one's actually the first uh, com computerized all electronic machine. And um, this is a link here. I suppose that's up there too. Pretty clear. Uh, one of the Hus Husqvarna Viking groups where I had mentioned and uh, showed this and then I got a little bit of feedback too. But I'll go through the photos right now. Scroll through, do like a little kind of slideshow manually. And I just wanted to basically document. Um, when I disassemble, I like to photograph if I don't video, um, especially with a, a newer machine, even if this is similar, because it's kind of similar to the 6570, though it's a little it's definitely different um, but there's interestingly some boards that do swap there's a board under here that's the same as the 6570 um, some of these parts look like they'll interchange also but back to where I was saying I like to document so I know where the screws all go and what parts go where dad dad taught me that um, he's industrial master mechanic so basically when you disassemble also it's good to have a tray and lay down your parts and place them in order, as you'll see in some future fo photos, I didn't put them in a tray, but laid them out so that um, they're in the relative positions where they came from. So, um, this is kind of where you see that, so that screw goes there, that screw goes there, screw there, screw there, and then there's another uh, two screws that came out, another one for there and another one, this one was up there in the cover. Those are bad. Those are way high sodium. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, so, uh, what's interesting is the controls here. It's all computerized. So, instead of having a manual mechanism, you have stepper motors. And I have to look into this a little more, but it looks like there's only a stepper motor there and a stepper motor down here. So, only two stepper motors. Which is interesting. I wonder if there's like linear actuators in there um, or. I, it's, it just seems, at this time at least, more challenging to comprehend how two stepper motors are performing all the tasks. But maybe it's not so complicated when I think about it. Stitch length, one stepper motor, and then stitch width, another stepper motor, and um, maybe some kind of linear actuator. I guess it would just be a motor control to do reverse. Oh, okay, so maybe that's not, that, maybe that was throwing me off. So then you just have the motor control would do reverse. So then you could, yeah, that would make sense then. So you basically just electronically control stitch length, stitch width, and then reverse control would be with your motor control. Um, so what's new, as you can see, this board's, are, this board's also used back here on the 6570. This board here is new, and I hear it sounds like those below. I guess it's that one. It can be bad burn up. I'm going to probably disassemble a little more and take good photos and detail of the board so I can see all the different, hopefully the traces and all the components in detail. This is another board here. So it looks like there's two boards in this machine. There might be some more circuitry or boards inside too, but um, 
these three actually these three boards are the the main boards um, sounds like two foot feedback I got it's a little close up some fuses in here um, the black commutators I noticed pretty pretty quickly yeah, it looks like there's another board up in here too those black commutators uh, that carbon built up that definitely can be cleaned up I'll probably um, I probably shouldn't do that it should be completely disassembled and clean but I'll probably hook up the I'll chuck the Dewalt drill on there and I'm gonna get the trifle oil uh, uh, oil and then grease but I'll probably run a little sandpaper but I'm debating so I don't get the, the sandpaper particles I might use a little fine file and then uh, use a power drill and I'll spin this commutator and I can kind of clean that up sand that down a little bit didn't look like the cap was blown when I first looked at but kind of looking at it in the photo it looks like it's cracked a little bit so I have some other ones. Um, I, I didn't do the math to verify the frequency suppression. Uh, roughly, I thought it would be okay, but um, I, I didn't verify uh, mathematically. I should get a calculation now. It'd be good to see. Good exercise. And this is a board that's the same with the 65. At least verbally, I've been told 6570. I thought there was only one screw um, holding the other one on, but maybe it's maybe it's not. Maybe it's the same. I noted that here. And then there's another stepper motor, so, uh, which I'm guessing has to do with stitch width, but maybe it is controlling the feed dogs or something and stitch length. So I, you know, I don't, I don't know. This little spring though was unhooked in the 6570 when I opened her up, and cause these were all pretty stiff. Uh, this little idler pulley. So now I see how that is. So <laughs> I have to reconnect that on the 6570. And I probably should try to adjust that. See if I can get that stitch selector mechanism back in the position where that will actually stitch. Even being stuck left home, um, stitching pretty good. Because that was stitching pretty good last I left off. Other than when I started switching around like an idiot. The stitch selector dial or knob and... Phew, threw that off to where I wasn't stitching correct anymore. Unless something broke and it just isn't going to go back that way again. Another screw here. This screw comes off. This seems to be similar with those six, the Vuskvarna uh, 2000 series and the Viking 6000 series. And then this uh, free arm cover pulls right out. You have to cover, I'm uh, sorry, you have to close this little uh, door for the bobbin, case and bobbin, in, in order to uh, slide that out. And then just showing here is a lot more lint inside than I expected. This wasn't a seized machine. It wasn't stuck. It spun. It seemed a little stiff. They are a stiffer machine, it reads like. Um, this one doesn't have the pull out, pull in the two gear, if I understand right. So it didn't feel like or see like it when I looked in um, side either to the bobbin winder, that little knob you can pull out and do a high low gear, at least on the 6570. I haven't looked at the 6430 yet. Um, that's pretty much uh, just some photographs. What all came with? It's a really o overview. Uh, nothing really thorough in regards to inspection. But for twenty-five dollars, just this bobbin case and the bobbin are worth. It's a vintage one. I figured this is worth just for this. And with the other one, just amazing. She was selling me on the pedal being worth seventy dollars. I'm like, well, for twenty-five. The other one was twenty-five dollars also. And uh, for the bobbin case and bobbin on that one. And the cams alone, I mean, those cams look like they're selling for 8 to $12 or more um, individually. So the cams on the other one are worth it, worth it. So that day of getting both of these is a really great trip. And it'll be cool to see. It'll be awesome, actually, if both work. And it seems like that. 6470, other than the button hole um, dial that pulls out being stuck. Everything else seems to be not the smoothest, but seems to be moving. Hopefully that stitch selector mechanism is not broken. Uh, but it might be, but it looks like it is turning. Um, this is another plastic gear in here. Um, I've not read anywhere these ones are bad, they go bad. It's with the other models, the stitch selection, the pattern gears typically. I guess the cam plastic breaks also. Um, and there might be a main gear on that cam that can break too. But um, for the most part, this one looks pretty good. It has the same those oil lights, um, uh, centered steel bearings and that I'll have to warm them up that's why I'll 
probably run with the power drill um, to get the bearings kind of heat, heat up. Uh, warms up that uh, grease oil so it kind of comes out of the bearing. And then I'll oil, I'll lube, and then I'll grease so that when that cools down, that will suck back in that tri-flow. So I'm waiting for tri-flow for these orders. Um, they just don't come back for service um, when you use a tri-flow. So I didn't really want to use a PTFE. Um, lubricant and grease, but uh, it kind of broke down. I figure for these, um, I might as well. And then the Chrysler, uh, or the Kenmore 120 new process gear division of Chrysler, those also have the oil light bearings. So um, I'm thinking it would be a good idea to use that tri-flow on those. Some swear in general to use. But I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Um, you can see here I go on the stop recording. I'll just maybe load up my settings real quick so you can see the settings. Um, outputs, audio, video, and you can see here I went to 24, I, I switched from 30, I figured I'd see if it'd uh, perform a little better, and then I think I'm just going to leave the output scale resolution. The default was um, 480, um, but you barely can read the text, I think this works a little better. So, okay, be safe, stay healthy, and um, Christ be with you, until next time.